when you hear this tape, it's very clear that one person wanted the story to go away, and that would be Michael Cohen. I mean, he was going on about how he's got him on tape, and I'm listening to this tape, and I'm like, no, 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 no. The tape actually proves exactly what he said all along, was he really didn't know what the heck they were doing. I want you to hear this, and we can discuss on the other side. But this is really, I think, some of the biggest evidence thus far that we have seen. The prosecution thinks this helps them. It helps Trump. Yet again, the boomerang effect. Listen. Correct. So I'm, I'm all over that. And I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be... Listen, what financing? We'll have to pay you. So no, pay no, 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 no. I got... So I see Michael Cohen's got it. You know, Drew, we didn't talk about this earlier, but if you still have that report from MSNBC on Hope Hicks, I'd love to play that for people. Because on the day that Hope Hicks testified just last week, what was communicated, and the MSNBC reporter laid it all out there for us, what, co what was communicated was that Michael was very concerned about things. Uh, Donald Trump did have some concern about his wife, Melania. Uh, Colangelo is saying, can you describe? Here are certain things. In fact, Hope Hicks pointed out that he asked her to go and get the newspapers and, and put the newspapers away as some of this information was uh, coming is saying, can you just? He didn't want it affecting her. But she uh, had a very emotional saying, can you testimony. She basically said, Michael really didn't do much for anybody. And that the idea of him paying this for Donald Trump, well, that was something that Trump was sort of surprised about. That surprise is echoed, is it not, ladies and gentlemen, in the audio tape that we just heard? Can, can we hear it one more time, Drew, that audio tape, and then we'll go to Hope Hicks, because this is just unbelievable. Michael Cohen basically saying, no, 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 don't worry, I, I got it all taken care of. I'm the fixer, right, ladies and gentlemen? I am the fixer. I take care of things, including whatever the heck this one was. Here we go. Correct, so I'm, I'm all over that. And I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be listen. What financing? We'll have to pay you. So pay for no, 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 no. I got. What'd you have, Michael? Hmm. Let's listen back and and hear the reporter that was in the courtroom as Hope Hicks went to the stand as Hope Hicks talked about Michael Cohen. Here we go. Uh, Colangelo is saying, can you describe the conversation? And Hope Hicks saying this. It was the day after Michael told the New York Times saying he made a payment without Trump's knowledge and that Trump said he spoke to Michael and Michael had paid this woman to protect him from a false allegation. And Michael had done it to protect him and had not told him anything about it. I had known Cohen for three and a half years. I did not know Michael to be an especially charitable person. He is the kind of person who takes credit. Trump thought it was generous of him to do, and he appreciated the loyalty. And then Hicks goes on to say, Michael felt like it was his job to protect him. Again, that would be out of character for Michael, Hope Hicks says. I don't know Michael to be an especially charitable person. He wanted to know how it was playing out in the media. This is kind of part of what has been going on throughout the day, um, Alex, which has been an incredibly interesting testimony, I have to say, um, from Hope Hicks, with about just 45 minutes left in court because they are going to go into recess at 345. Hope, Hope Hicks has really been connecting the dots, right? Every single person we have heard on the stand so far throughout this trial, whether it's Rona Graf, whether it's David Pecker, Hope Hicks has been somewhat of connecting those dots. She was even asked the questions of who is Alan Weisselberg? What did Alan Weisselberg do in the Trump organization? What did Rona Graf do? Where did Rona Graf, in fact, sit? How close was she to the former president? Dating back, of course, thinking back, of course, to Rona Graf's testimony about the fact that she knew Stormy Daniels had visited Trump Tower. She had inserted uh, Karen McDougal's address along with phone number into the Okay, so in other words, Hope Hicks had it going on. Hope Hicks knew a lot about what was going on. And one of the points that she was making was that he was the fixer, but that, you know, Michael wasn't necessarily the best kind of guy in the world. We know that, right? We, we've heard that over and over again. Heck, we know that. MSNBC is talking about it. CNN is talking about it. I've been telling you here, like, this is kind of amazing when you see this shift in sentiment on the media side of things. They hate Trump, like, with every fiber of their being, and yet even they are realizing now, this is not looking good. This is not looking good for Alvin Bragg. No wonder he didn't want to bring the case in the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, right? It all makes sense now.